Giga Texas is 95% done, and I'll show you the math to prove it. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Please subscribe if you haven't. Smack the likey button. You know what to do. YouTube doesn't show it. Blah, blah, blah. Let's get on with it. Yes, really, for real, it's 95% done. I got heat last week for saying production had started, even though it has. And trial production really is underway. Here's Elon in an interview with the Wall Street Journal a few days ago. And what you see behind him is a finished area of the factory and a Model Y right there on the assembly line. In the early days of this series, I saw a huge number of rightly skeptical comments saying my numbers were off, my timeline couldn't possibly be realistic. But here we are, almost a year later, and it's looking pretty good. Maybe I massaged the math. Well, I don't think I did, but I'll give you a look under the hood in a little bit. But first, let's talk about this week's progress. Here's the graph. And here's the part that's relevant. It went up. The numbers went up. The roof got its final areas covered with a first layer of decking and some of it with additional layers. Most of the roof is completely done. That's it. That's the visible progress as it relates to the tracker. We only have another 17 sections of exterior walls to add in coming weeks, but that's all that's left to count. Now, the tracker will continue after that, because the interior sections count more slowly, but we're kinda done-ish. So let's talk about the actual math. The site prep in Texas was assigned 20% weight. It would have been less in Shanghai since grading a watermelon farm is effortless compared to knocking down hills, filling massive trenches, and making a site like this buildable. Berlin would have had some weight given to site prep since they first had to clear the tree farm, but this was on a whole other level. 20% weighting, I thought was fair, and we can all agree that it's finished since, you know, the factory is sitting atop it. The footings were assigned the next 20%, and again, those are obviously complete, as you can see for the very same reasons. The framing gets us another 20%, up to 60% in total, and we can once more agree that this aspect is complete. But that's where the agreements kind of end. If a building is 100% framed up, with zero roof coverings, it's not 60% done. That's more like 40% at most, maybe only 30%, right? My timeline doesn't look at dollars or man hours, but at you know, time. I used the pace of construction at other sites to reverse engineer an equation that would land me on the actual amount of time it takes to finish the project based on what's done so far, and it's looking pretty accurate. My Tesla work in Excel is very good. I've been within 91 cars of accurate on quarterly production estimates in the past, but this was a new beast and it's worked out pretty well. But then we get to the roof. Well, my math says the roof is 91.5% done because although it's entirely covered, it only counts half of it when the first layer goes down with the second half racking up along with the slower count of the interior. Well, considering there's only one area where the final layers of roof material have yet to be attached, I would say that this is, if anything, undercounted. It does get a 20% weighting, which may be unfairly high, and that's something I'll consider adjusting in future trackers. And lastly, we get to the interior, which the tracker shows at 82.6% done. Well, that can't be right. Well, I think it can. Let's look at it one section at a time, and remember that once a square is counted towards interior completion, it counts as 0% done that week and slowly racks up over the next four months until it's fully counted. The Stamping Cathedral has been done for months. It was the first area fully enclosed and the first to get equipment. This area accounts for 134 of the site's total squares, or 6%. Next is the body in Whitehall, 
which we know has operational robots on the first floor and storage for front and rear assembly castings on the second floor. That may not be the final use for the space upstairs, but it's definitely finished for its purposes today. That's another 362 squares, or 16%. The casting cathedral is done, and we know because it's been done for a while, and it's been churning out castings for months. But we're only going to count the older part of it, which is 72 squares, 3% of the total building. Beside that is the paint shop, which we've seen photos of on the Q3 earnings report. That's another 185 squares for 8%. Then we have General Assembly, which is also where the training center and offices are located. This is also done. Some lingering configuration may need to be sorted out, but it's done. That's another 476 squares, or 21% of the total site. These elements together represent 53% of the building, which is at 100% done. That means the rest of Giga Texas only needs to be 63% done inside. Although peering in what few windows where we're able to see, it may not look that far along, it is my belief that it is. The massive Southwest Prairie doesn't need to have equipment installed for the factory to be complete. Just power, water, lights, and fire sprinklers. The Fremont factory was considered complete when Tesla was only using 10% of it, and these large spaces for expansion are no different. They will be filled quickly enough, and they do not stand in the way of a final certificate of occupancy. So what adjustments to the tracker do you think would be helpful for a future construction site? I would suggest maybe a slightly faster count on the roof, and shifting the weighting to give more importance to the interior over the roof, but what do you guys think would improve the accuracy? Looking at the site, the number of worker cars remains in the thousands, despite the number of workers outside reaching all-time lows. That tells me the inside is just screaming along. There are some other persistent questions I should address real quick, like the lack of pavement and parking lots and landscaping. Well, that all moves, as I've said before, very quickly, and if you look back over the past two or three weeks, you'll see what I mean. So let's take a look at the site map for this week and go from there. I'm not going to focus much on Phase 2 and its extension because even though they're filling the dirt and compacting it as if an extension is imminent, we just don't know. So this is what Giga Texas looks like as of December 6th, 2021, and let's roll it back to December 14th of last year when this tracker first launched and go through it as we do week of a week. To understand the site map, this is the overall footprint of the main building. The orange is the footings, with the darker orange being heavier footings. The gray is the framing work, with the darker gray indicating roof sections. In blue, you see the finished interior closed off space, with darker blue indicating more floors. Yes, we tracked the floors. So. The darker the blue, the more floors that there are. The black lines indicate a firewall or expansion joint, with the heavier black lines indicating a concrete wall. And as a reminder, this only tracks the main emerald footprint, not any of the other projects around the site, since we haven't seen permits and we don't know what their eventual size and scope will be. Mad thanks to Jeff Roberts for allowing use of his amazing drone footage. So there it is, and there you go. As of December 6th, Giga Texas, the future birthplace of Yo Saba Truck, is 95% done. And it will be complete, for lack of a better word, in a total of 530 days from groundbreaking on or about January 2nd. It will obviously be done in some capacity before then, and also not completely done until quite a bit later, as other parts of the factory come online. 
Really, at this point, it's more a matter of how you personally decide to count it. Based on viewer feedback, I think the completion will be counted when the first production models are seen piling up outside, or when an open house takes place. Whichever comes first. So what do you think? Will the factory be essentially done in 27 days, discounting the long tail of interior work? Subscribe if you haven't to get notified. Follow me on Twitter at 4K Podcast and smack the thummy thing in either direction if you made it this far. And don't forget to tune in Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific for another episode of Fast Charging with B&B, the podcast hosted by myself and Bear from Bear's Workshop. Man, we have a lot of fun. So what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave your wisdom and suggestions in the comments below. And as always, my friends, I beg you to stay tuned and I need you to stay juicy. And please remember that I simply cannot wait to hear from you clever robots live from the county fair like they had in Berlin, regardless of whether or not I score an invitation. And a quick thank you to my amazing gracious Patreons who get early access, bonus content, all that good stuff, help keep the channel running for as little as a buck a month, and a Giga Texas size thank you to all of you for your generosity and support, which helps keep me going in spite of YouTube being kind of the worst. By the way, a bunch of payments didn't go through this month, something's up with Patreon, so if you're still on board, maybe take a quick peek to see if your information is still current so we can get it all, you know, I don't know. It's a mess. And for those of you who stuck it out to the end, here is your overtime bonus. Look at this rare glimpse inside Giga Texas, courtesy of Brian Roshetsky Photography. You can see how clean it is in there and how much is done. Crates and boxes mean work is underway. Tidy spaces mean they've moved on to the next area. With so much coverage of Giga Texas, he takes a less clinical approach and a more artistic one, and I think he does fantastic work. Links in the description.